Um, so I'm talking to you guys today about the importance of Jesus coming. Um, Christmas has just become something that's this wild, spectacular, and I love the Christmas season. I like, I'm the kind of person who, the day after, you know, it's November 1st, I'm like, can we put the tree up, please? It's November, and Jonathan, Jonathan is a big, not until after Thanksgiving person, so I beg for like a month straight. Um, but I just love it. I love presents and cookies. I love cheesy Christmas movies, and I love driving around to see all the displays of lights. I love just all the decorations and ugly Christmas sweaters. That's just a fabulous tradition that started, and I love it. I think it's hilarious. But um, today I'm, I have the privilege of walking with you all through the importance of Christ's birth and the significance of that in the greater picture of God's perfect plan. Because um, the, the first Christmas, it came with a totally different set of expectations than what we have today. There was a totally different excitement behind it. There were no trees or glistening lights. There were no elves hiding in anybody's house. There were no presents under any trees, no Christmas carols. It was just simple and beautiful, and the most looked forward to birth in the history of the entire world. God created this world to be perfect, and his plan was that we would get to walk with him and be with him um, every day. He wanted to commune with us, but that plan was ruined by man and their sinfulness. Adam and Eve chose to sin, and that ended. And from that day, when that broke God's heart, he made a plan that one day his people would again be able to be with him. They wouldn't have to be separated forever. Um, and that's really what the birth of Christ is about, is that his people for hundreds of years had to go through a priest in order to talk to God. To have their sins forgiven, they had to make sacrifices. And God had the plan that his son was going to come and take all of our sins for us. And... You know, I just, I love the history of, like, the Hebrew people and the Israelites and how they, they pass things on from generation to generation. So, you know, where our kids, our favorite Christmas traditions are, like, watching our favorite Christmas movies and doing that stuff, you know, their families at big holidays would tell of what God has done and of the prophecies that were told and that are coming. Um... And so one of those prophecies is in Isaiah. And um, I'm going to read you from that, just about Isaiah. Isaiah was um, one of his most famous prophecies is about Jesus coming, which is why we're reading from that today. And um, just remembering that, you know, God's plan from the beginning from the first time man sinned was that one day we wouldn't have to live in darkness, that his people wouldn't have to be separate from him, that we wouldn't have to die um, because he had something so much greater for us. So um, Isaiah 9, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 6 and 7. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when, the, when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. What a beautiful promise. Those who walk in darkness will see a great light. And that is the promise of Christ, is that you know, those of us who, who have lived a life of darkness, 
when we came to know Christ as our Savior, we walked into such a great light that darkness is gone. And um, God's people were longing for that day when that light would come, when that Savior would come. They were just, just so anxious for that Savior who was to come, that wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. And I just love, he will rule in fairness and justness. So can you imagine what excitement that gave his people? You know, they had been slaves repeatedly. Their land had been taken from them, the Israelites, because of the choices that they made to not serve God, because they had turned their back on him time and time again. And yet God still wanted to be with his people. He still made that promise. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of their sin, God still said, he's coming. I'm going to send you a savior. And um, that for me is what Christmas, that's what I've been focusing on this Christmas, really, is just realizing that it was such a promise to look forward to. It was, you know, just that anticipation of like 400 years, you know, more than that, way more than that. Hundreds of years, they just couldn't wait for this. And I think it's a lot to wait a year for Christmas. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, man, not until next year. But they just, it was so long awaited. And so um, I'm going to read to you guys in a little bit just the story from Luke 2, which I didn't want to do because to me that's just like every Christmas we read that. But um, as I was going through this, I was like, but in light of, how long it was waited for in light of what that brought to us, what that means to us as followers of Christ because he came and he was able to take our sin as his sacrifice and die for us and raise again in, um, in victory. Um, it just has such a great significance to me this year. So... Um, Doug, when I'm like halfway through this, you can come up because I have like reading this and then I'm done. So just so you know, it's going to be short but sweet because <laughs> that's how I keep it. I told Jonathan, I was like, man, service is going to be short today because I was not mentally prepared for all of this. But um, so anyways, in light of all of that, in light of God's promises, in light of Isaiah's foretelling of Christ to come, um, just when, as I read this, think about all of those things. Think about what it meant to hear that the Savior was finally coming. What it meant to know that their time of suffering was coming to an end. Because they wouldn't have to go through a priest. They wouldn't have to sacrifice. Because God was sending his son to save them from all of that. And to save us from death from permanent death, and now we can live forever because of him. So I'm going to read Luke 2. And in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 
When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what was told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May you treasure these things up in your heart and ponder them this year, just as Mary did. May you return to your homes glorifying and praising God for all that he has done and all that he will do. God bless you guys. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you came for us so humbly, so quietly into earth at first, and then, God, with just such a great noise, you let yourself be known. God, I ask that you would just help each and every one of us to focus on you this Christmas, to remember that you are the reason that we celebrate, God, that we even attempt to celebrate in a way that is deserving of you, Lord. God, I ask that um, for any of us who have loved ones who have not seen the light, Lord, that you would bring them to you this season. God, that you would just do a work in all of our homes. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you came and you saved us. There are not enough words to thank you that we get to live in the freedom that is you. Amen. <laughs>